This training video was developed at the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading. It's part of a set of resources aimed primarily at researchers. For this demonstration, we have divided our forms so there is one for each page of the questionnaire. We will consider two topics here. First, we will look at the roster, the activities, and secondly, we will demonstrate how to include the identification items on each form. This latter technique is known as using mirror fields. When the items are in a record with many rows per questionnaire, such as items in the activity record, the items are often added to the form together as a roster table, as seen here. Each item will be in a separate column and the number of rows will match the maximum number of rows specified when the record was created. In the case of the activities, this is seven. The roster can be resized in exactly the same way as any other item on the screen and we recommend resizing it where possible so that all columns and all rows are visible. When you do this the scroll bars will disappear. Within each column you can format the column headers. Right click the column header and choose properties. As well as changing the font and the text color, as you've seen with other text on the forms, you can also change the horizontal and vertical alignments. Within the columns, the boxes for the data are aligned to the right of the column by default, but these can be moved. And note that when you move the box in one row, the boxes in the other rows automatically move to match. When you have a questionnaire spanning several data entry forms, as we have here, it can be useful to include the identification items at the top of each form so that during data entry you can easily see that you are entering the data for the correct questionnaire. Data for the identification items will be entered on the first screen but will be displayed on all screens. There are two ways to do this and we will demonstrate both methods. We have some space on the page 2 form to include the village code and household number as they are formatted on page 1. So we will copy these across. We select these items, we use Control c to copy them, then we go to page 2 and use Control v to paste them. Now the pasted items appear in the same position on page 2 as they were on page 1. And this unfortunately is on top of existing items. So we'll click undo and make some space in the appropriate place. And we'll paste again. Now we can move these around. and move the other information, the other items, back up the form. Now on page 3, there is limited space on the form, so we will add the items directly from the dictionary. We click the Dix tab at the bottom of the left hand panel and make sure the ID items is open. We select village code and drag that across to a space on the form. We do the same with household number and once on the form we can format these, align them 
and let's draw a box around them. This method of dragging from the dictionary is actually how you would add items to forms if you were creating them from scratch, if you weren't starting from the default form. Now, when we move back to the forms tab, you should notice that village code and household number on page two and page three are in gray whereas all the other items are in green. Now on page one, these two items are also in green. These occurrences of these items are what we call mirror fields, as they mirror the items on page one. You will not be able to enter data into these mirror fields, but data will be displayed. Our data entry forms are now complete and ready to be tested. You should now be able to produce forms of your own for your own surveys. In the next demonstration, we will use these forms to enter some data. Whenever you create a data entry system, you should always test it by entering some data before passing it to your data entry staff.